Good morning. It's Tuesday. I just finished my workout uh, about an hour ago. Um, I got up at 3.45 and started my gym workout, getting laundry done after that. Took my supplements. Um, now I'm sitting with a cup of tea and I figured I would hop on real quick to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the di uh, direct messages that I've gotten and um, communications through social media. So I just wanted to clarify some things, talk about some things, and have some discussion, dialogue on some confusions that people have. So I did make notes, because that's how I run. <laughs> um, so first off, people ask me all the time what I use for a scale. And I like my Fit Index. I have it in the bathroom, and it shows you more than just your weight. It gives you your body mass index, your visceral fat percentage, um, and kind of gives you a trending so you can see where you jump off from, or a date that you say, hey, I want to lose in a, a week, I want to lose in a month. It gives you different goals to set. So really enjoy that. I've used that for over two years now. Um, it's been really good for me to just kind of see you know, my ups and downs and how different um, intermittent fasting works for me. I do one meal a day. Some people are not there yet, and that's totally fine. And it's not a goal. I, I shouldn't say there yet. Um, it's just it works for me and how busy I am with kids and house and work and everything else going on, clients. Um, I've been taking on new clients. I used to be certified and personal train all the time in the gym, so now I'm trying to get back into that in the effect of I would like to open my own space to empower women and I focus on women because a lot of the times I think unfortunately women are really mean to one another so it's easier for them to judge or literally point fingers when it's just not nice. Um, I think especially nowadays women need to empower one another and be like cheerleaders of most instead of bringing others down. That's a wicked downfall that I see in a lot of um, videos and Facebook groups. I'm looking at my computer right now. Um, I have some of my clients waking up and I know two of my clients should be still in their workouts. I'm holding you accountable and be messaging you after. Um, that being said, I love to build women up. I love to be the cheerleader in the group and tell people how beautiful they are. I'm definitely one that stops strangers and tells them I love their shoes because I just can't help myself. And I feel like just taking that couple minutes to tell somebody that you appreciate them makes a difference. It definitely does. So I'm jumping on right now just to kind of have a dialogue with you guys and, you know, go there. Um, some, so my Fit Index is one of those protein shakes. Looking at my notes. <laughs> Um, protein shakes is a big one. I used to be a real big isopere girl and um, while it's a lot of protein and it's no carbs, it tastes like chalk and I'm not sorry. But that being said, um, sometimes you're too busy to have a, a full meal or you don't want to cook or anything. So I have, and of course I put these next to me to make it easier. This is my keto chow. Um, I have three different flavors of this right now. If you want to use this, I have a discount code on my Facebook that you guys can get 10% off with. This one is raspberry cheesecake and it's awesome. It is very refreshing and fruity and sweet and has that cheesecake creaminess to it. I really like this one. That's one of the ones that I'm using right now. This one, Snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle is phenomenal. It's very cinnamony and perfect for the season. I also add, and I wanted to talk about this too, so I'm gonna kind of bring it in. Flavor God, this is pumpkin pie. Yes, it has a little bit of honey and sugar in it, but it's literally less than one gram, so I don't really worry about it because I feel like it's completely safe and it doesn't infect my macros. But that being said, for all you basic girls who need pumpkin spice, I am not that girl. I do not run to go get pumpkin spice anything. Um, I think the lettuce are gross. No judgment. That's your thing. But um, this stuff totally adds it. And it's like pumpkin pie with those two together. So for me, who doesn't have pumpkin pie? That's the thing. Oh, my favorite. Chocolate. Chocolate is the best. I'm not kidding. 
This is chocolate ice cream. So if you wanna add this into a shaker bottle with, I use personally light cream to make my keto chows, but this stuff is awesome. It's 133 calories, just the dry mix. Um, if you add butter, it's 538. With a half cup heavy cream, it's 540. Like I said, I don't use heavy cream. I use, I use light cream for everything. I don't like the heavy milk fat in the way that it affects my body. So I avoid it like the plague. A lot of people are really into MCT oil and uh, butter and heavy whipping cream, um, coconut oil. That's just not me. I've been doing this long enough that I don't really need to have those intense fats or fat bombs. So I avoid those. I prefer to have um, mono unsaturated fats for the most part. I still do saturated fats, but I definitely keep my eye on them and make sure that I'm regulating them a little bit just because your LDLs and your HDLs, which are the carriers for your cholesterol, for triglycerides, really need to be impacted and regulated. Um, so if you have too much of one or the other, um, so saturated versus mono, you're not balancing it out. And I know people say it all the time, but balance is a huge thing when you're dieting or looking for health. You need to find things that... Um, are compatible and work with your body. Not everyone keto is the same way. And I hate when people say, this is the only way, or I do this and that's what you need to do, or you have to intermittent fast. You don't. You do not at all. You do not have to have shakes. You do not have to have any of these things that I use. These are just tips and tricks that I've used, things that work for me and my schedule. And so if it helps you, that's totally great. That's where I'm going with this, but these are awesome for me. If you have a busy lifestyle, sometimes you can't meal prep. I don't like to meal prep because I find that it wastes. My family is the type that we all sit down about six o'clock, my beautiful husband comes home, and we have a meal together, and I love everybody sitting around the table talking about their day and explaining how school or work or anything was or what's coming up for the weekends. Um, it's just a time to regroup and regather, so I find that eating is so much more than just survival. And that being said, we fit it in about 6 p.m. Um, because I only eat one meal a day, it's not like I have spiked my insulin, but I'll snack ahead of time during my cooking just so that, you know, half hour before I've already got my body into digestion mode. I'm not satiate, uh, excuse me, I'm not starving before I eat. I get satiated really fast and that's the end. And I do have healthy fats, which I'm going to show you the ones that I personally use again you need to do things your way. And I love to talk to different people because we all have different ways of things that have worked for us. And that's, that's good. Um, I would never tell somebody to just do my way because this is the right way. And I get so mad and I have to learn to just let it go. But it's like, I almost want to be a freedom fighter and tell people that you can't treat people like that. We all have our own adaptations to the diet or how it works for us and hey if you like bulletproof coffee have that I would gag I'm drinking tea this is a uh, tropical green tea by mighty leaf so I, I've cut out coffee I just don't really need it anymore I find that working out I I can bounce around my office and around the shop and the guys are like what the hell did you take and I'm I worked out. <laughs> I wake up super happy. I'm a morning person, always have been. I don't eat in the morning. I'm not hungry in the morning. Take my supplements. I have tea and water and that's how that goes. Ooh, I hear my son stirring. Anyways, um, so that's kind of how my mornings go. Uh, afternoon, sometimes I'll have lunch, depends on my day. Um, I'm a firm believer in not having your body go stale. So if you are always eating just dinner, always eating just lunch, that's going to get your body used to that and you're not going to burn the same. Your body needs to have challenges and not be able to anticipate when it's going to get food again. That's kind of why the caveman diet was so successful with weight loss prior. People don't, people can't just, excuse me, <laughs> back up. People didn't have a food source that they could rely on like a fridge, so it wasn't a guarantee of when they were going to eat. Fasting works really well because you're reaching autophagy, your cells are being broken down and rebonded and strengthened, and so, I mean, that in itself is almost a pure cleanse. That being said, again, when you get food, your body uh, tends to spike insulin and hold on to certain things depending on the way you fast, but that's a whole nother, another video. Let's not go that down that rabbit hole. Okay, so I've talked about protein shakes. Back to my notes. The zero carb meth. 
I have heard so many people say, I don't eat zero carb. It's not healthy. That's why people get sick on keto. That's not why people get sick on keto. Keto is not zero carb. However, the dirty ketoers who I call the naughty teenagers will tell you over and over again that they don't, you know, they don't feel that it's healthy not to have carbs. You're right. Your body doesn't need to have carbs, but it doesn't need to have bread. It doesn't need to have pasta. It doesn't need to have starches and wheats and flours that are fast carbs and break down. If you are an athlete and you are carb loading, you are going to burn that crap off like crazy and that's the end of it. You're going to be starving after. Ask any athlete that's run a marathon. They are starving after. So that being said, I say that's being said a lot, huh? Anyways, um, so with that, if you're an athlete and you're working out and you are carb loading, you're giving yourself that extra boost afterwards, you're going to be starving. You're going to have to refuel again and cycle continues. A lot of bodybuilders, um, that's where I came from. We had very high protein, uh, medium carbs, and you weren't really too afraid of bread, but you kept an eye on it and low to no fat. And it works in a different process because you're feeding your muscles and the fats in your proteins, lean proteins, as well as sometimes uh, red meats would be fine for your body. But then I saw this girl and I'm not going to name her, but she knows she's the one who got me into heavy lifting. And, uh, it was at choice fitness in Haverhill, Massachusetts. That is probably my favorite gym that I've been to outside of CrossFit cut Walpole, Massachusetts. Um, this gym uh, in Haverhill was just loaded with people that were really bodybuilding and really working on themselves. So it was pretty cool. It was cool to see how strong these people were in the diets that they did and the ways that they learned to work out and teamwork and everyone was a family. So if you ever get to work out at Choice Fitness in Haverhill, say hi to Sean. He's awesome. He's the owner. Um, he makes it like a family. So I was really... I'm sad to leave there, and I haven't found a gym like that since I got up up to the Lakes region in New Hampshire. That being said, I've that phrase. Um, I have tried a couple times at different gyms and not really found the same feeling. I'm not a big fan of some of the CrossFits up here. I feel like they are meatheads. I probably shouldn't say that, but it's true. I don't like that whole grunt scratch your chest, tickle your balls bullshit. I'm not that girl. I prefer to work out. I like someone that's in my face and is like, you got this, you got this motivating and inspirational and, you know, working like a team. That's what I came from when I did CrossFit Cut in Walpole. And it was such a healthy, happy environment. It's almost like I'm looking for that and I can't find it. The zoo in Derry, New Hampshire was where is it? London Dairy. It's right on the line. Anyways, that was a really cool gym for a while. Um, when I had moved into that area, just because it was open all the time. I like 3 a.m. workouts. I know that sounds freaking crazy, but I hate to share my equipment. I don't like someone standing over me and watching me because I'm a girl. They want to intimidate me or get on the bench after. It's just, no, stay the hell away from me. So having my own gym, thank goodness. My husband is very supportive of that. And he's even bought me a, um, punching bag, which literally I cannot wait to hang up. But that's a huge thing. I think, especially in keto is people don't understand the kind of support you need. And some people are really pushy as to their family members. Um, your mind is a big part of where this all goes. You know, you cannot build a body of being healthy and fit just in the gym. It has to come from the kitchen too. And a big support of that is your family. My kids understand it completely. They are part of that. <laughs> Sorry, a client just messaged me. Um, I definitely am a huge fan of my children working out. I like them down in the gym with me. I like them doing yoga with me. I like seeing my son grab a weight and, you know, tra challenge himself. My husband's not as much into fitness as I am but he's so cute. He's let me stretch him out a couple times and taken some tips. And we've worked out a couple times this morning. He came down and I was starting my workout. Typically I wait till he leaves because I don't know. I don't like to be watched. <laughs> I like to do my thing and grunt as I need to. And I had burlesque on the TV on Netflix 
And so I'm kind of like dancing, doing my leg routine to it. And, you know, it just adds a level of fun. So I don't think he needs to see that. <laughs> he sees me dance around and sing in the kitchen like it's my own personal concert enough. <laughs> so, <ooh. laughs> that was the new... So I have um, a new setup that I was working on earlier and I have to nail it down above my stove, but I was just kind of checking things out and it fell over. Yeah, that was that crash. I'll fix that after. So support. You need to have people that support you around and don't try to change you, don't to try to put you down or say negative things about it, especially when they don't have any science backing. People that sell exogenous ketones, I'm sorry, I have no respect for you. Um, and you kind of fall into that group. Um, they don't support others. They feel like this is the only way to do it. And let's just take a moment to say exogenous ketones are junk. If you are taking exogenous ketones, then you should probably not follow me because I'm going to tell you straight up, and I have many times made enemies with people that sell them. All right, so you get out of glycogenesis, you've broken down all the glycogen in your body, and your body is now looking for another energy source. So it goes to your fat cells. Your fat cells are literally cells that have basically expanded to hold in that fat because it's a backup reserve, like a generator, right? So you have that generator that's on hold just in case you need it. Well, now your generator kickstarts in, and that's what they're going to break down. So ketosis, ketosis starts. Okay, so if you have the urine strips, when you first start, your body is making so much and your abundance will tell you, yes, I'm in ketosis. Then after a while, you kind of dwindle off and people get kind of discouraged because they're not seeing that high level on the urine strips. But your body's not trying to make an excess. It's trying to only make what it needs. Your body's lazy. By trade, your body is so freaking lazy. So you need to be in the driver's seat to make sure that it's doing what you want, manipulating your fitness okay so and that being said when you put exogenous ketones in your body right so you have those fat cells let's keep that in mind you have these fat cells and you want to shrink them you want to soak out that fat and make that fat be used for your energy and your brain because it will break down into sugar and that's a whole nother again topic but um you need to have that going on for your brain and your body and your functions and your muscles and i mean this is major important you have to have an energy source okay so you take exogenous ketones what does that do? People say, oh, it gives me energy. Well, no shit, that's ketones for you. But exogenous ketones will make your body not have to produce. So your fat cells are gonna stay the same size because you have other, other forms of energy coming in. Those ketones are going to slow down your production of actual ketogenesis. That's science for you. Uh, do I take them? Absolutely not. You could not pay me to take them. Um, nope. Never, <laughs> never. So if I see any of those nat perv things, prove it, whatever ones you are on, ooh, give me a month, try it without it, and just do natural and see how much it changes. It will change, I swear to God. Um, but a lot of people don't believe it, and they are so insecure on the fact that they don't think they can do natural ketosis on their own. Well, when you're in natural ketosis, your body is burning and looking for that fuel source. And if you're shaking up your routine and constantly like with the different fats, working them in to make sure that you're satiated and not snacking and having insulin spikes, your body is going to burn like crazy. And I'm telling you this from experience. I can burn, if I want to, a pound to two a day. Let that sink in. Mm -hmm. So I can go from 30 pounds from the beginning of the month to the end of the month easily. And I know that by manipulating my fats, manipulating what I'm eating. That means I typically do the one meal a day to two meals a day. I alternate that. Um, some intermittent fasting, monk fasting, as well as prolonged, but I keep those as wet. Again, I'll talk about that in another video. Um, but with that, yeah, you can really lose a ton of weight and still be healthy. A lot of people say, oh, I want to do it slow and steady. Okay. That's your thing, and there's nothing wrong with that. Although, when you do it slow and steady, you have to be mindful of your ingredients. A lot of people don't think of the ingredients there. I'm happy being a dirty keto. Okay, that's cool. You're not gonna lose weight as fast. Do not get discouraged. Don't yell in these groups that you don't understand why your weight is stalled. It's like eating maltitol and wondering why the hell you're shitting your brains out. Not sorry. <laughs> Maltitol is really bad for you. It's a 35 on the glycemic index, and it will spike you out of control even if you do not get the diarrhea and the gassy effects and the bloating. 
that it is known for. It is a cheap sugar that most of these places like Russell Stover's and Reese's and all them have used to manipulate the buyers and the market to grab some of those market shares in order to uh, not lose them. Because nowadays people are becoming more aware of their fitness and their health and their sugars. So, oh yeah, that's sugar free. No, it's not. It's FDA regulated, which these bastards yell, ugh, these bastards lie to you. These are the same people that support the standard American diet, which has made more cancer, diseases, and fucking morbid obesity than ever. Because people do not know their portions. They do not know what is in their food. I was one of them. Oh my God, I was so one of them. I loved wheat bread. I loved pasta. Being an Italian girl, oh my God, give me olive oil and a crusty bread with pasta and loaded with sauce, loaded with cheese, and I didn't think anything of it. But then you look at it in a macro sense and you're like, holy shit, I am overloading my system with things that are going to be so hard for it to break down. And why? Why? Mm. I got into ketosis. I got into heavy lifting. I got into kind of seeing what triggers. Now, again, I have tattoos. I have my husband's name over here. It's my favorite one. It's in Italian. And then I have my kids over here. Um, yeah. I, I'm afraid of needles, but I still test my blood and I'm very adamant, especially because I've had a heart condition for years that I have to take care of myself and I really have to know where I'm at, especially with my cholesterols, where I am um, just on the scale all over. I want to know every bit. So if you have a keto mojo, cheers to you. If not, look into it because your urine strips are not going to be accurate. Those exogenous ketones are not going to do anything besides make expensive pee on your urine tests if that's what you're after. I won't rave on about exogenous ketones because I could go on and on about how unhealthy they are and how athletes truly don't use them even though they're paid sometimes to say they do. I know a couple. Just saying. So marketing, I went to college for it and uh I'm always looking into what colors people are using, how they're marketing things, and how they are projecting these onto the public. Because a big part of this is how you are impacted. You are impacted by the way people spin things and talk and your celebrities and everything. You want to believe that the greater good is in your favor, but it's not the way it is. People are out for the almighty dollar. I make no money off of the things I do, um, except personal training. I definitely get paid for that and, uh, nutrition counseling. I get paid for those. However, online, I don't ask for anything. I get involved in these groups cause I really want to help people and shake people. Cause a lot of the times the misinformation that comes is gross, gross, but enough about that. I could go, I could, I could go on and on with the things that really frustrate me because it's so hard to lose weight. It's so hard to get to a healthier you that it aggravates the absolute shit out of me when people push things that they shouldn't. People think they know everything about fitness and weightlifting and training and um, health and dieting and this is the only way and ketosis can only be done this way. It's not true. I do not know everything. I'm the first one to admit that. I am constantly learning, so I annoy my family because I'm always watching fitness videos. I want to know the science behind everything, and I don't just watch one person. I think that's very one-sided. I want to see all of the fights. I want to see what people say about how, you know, different bodies react, especially different ages. You'll find that your metabolism slows down with different ages. And um, your visceral fat around your stomach actually tells a lot about your age and um, your f body fat, again, will help out with aging and your skin processes. And I mean, it's, it's such an intertwined system. I love to learn about it. I'm a total geek, but my Fridays and Saturdays and even Sunday nights, you know, those wild thirties that people talk about. No, I am so boring. I am drinking ginger ale, Zevia watching a movie, hitting my hot tub, talking about some science debate, reading online, looking at YouTubes, recipes, making menus, um, cooking, baking. I don't do a ton of baking, but I will do um, some breads and stuff like that with almond flowers or coconut flowers for the kids or even make, um, my daughter wanted a blueberry crisp the other day, so I did that. We're big into fruits and veggies for the kids. They are more of a low carb than keto, but they eat all the keto meals. So I kind of laugh 
Um, my children are definitely not afraid of nature candy is what we've always called it, which some people are absolutely amazed that kids will eat like that. But I guess if you never really give them a choice and make it more fun, make them be involved in the choices they're, they're making as well as the education behind it, they don't think anything of it. My husband sometimes thinks I'm crazy. Um, he doesn't really understand one meal a day and I don't blame him. Um, we were brought up pretty differently and we had different experiences. My best friend in the absolute world, Alicia, she has the same name as me, same initials too. Um, she's one of my biggest motivators and probably the best person I've ever met in my life. I can say that really confidently. She has always understood my weaknesses, how I am, knows how to push me, knows how to motivate me. And I say it with so much love that she has totally been an inspiration, a motivation, and my biggest cheerleader. She never gives up on me. She always believes in me. She's the one that owns that CrossFit Cut gym in Walpole. And watching her work out and the motivation and the way she's turned her life around, just that's my role model. Absolutely my role model. She's an amazing mom. She has a body like a fucking goddess. Like YouTube, Alicia Greaves, or on her Instagram, CrossFit Cut Walpole, she is built like a brick shit house. Oh, I'm not that. I would love to be that, but I'm not there yet. Give me time. That being said, I'm a little squishy and I'm all right with it. I'm getting back into losing mode. I was in maintaining for a while and I want to lean out and get back into competitions. So I'm back to strict. For me, strict is not just not counting. A lot of people think that just strict is uh, strict is counting and ma- measuring everything, and it's not for me. Strict for me is low dairy, high veggies, um, paying attention to my meats and my saturated fats and my seasonings, and I make my own dressings, and really being more hands-on than going to processed foods. Now, that being said, you can't say that I don't have processed foods in my house. I have two kids that are on the go, and I am not here to bake or do or cook or uh, all day long. That's just not going to happen. Um, we have school. We're remote learning right now, so it's a busy day. <laughs> and um, so I have zero-carb bread. I have uh, those mission... I'm looking up there because I think I still have some left. The mission-carb wraps. My son loves paninis. Um he loves quesadillas. So I definitely cater to that, but it's on a healthier scale. You can see these are all veggies and fruits here. They will attack all those. Um, excuse me. I have a freezer downstairs that we stock full of meat. All of it's mostly farm stuff. We harvested blueberries, grapes, and raspberries this year. So those are in the freezer ready to go whenever. Um, my fridge up here is pretty stocked well with, you know, keto, low carb options for them to just grab and go, uh, yogurts, cheeses, uh, we have a lot of charcuterie stuff. A lot of people don't, don't understand what that is, but that's like meat and crackers, flackers in our world. Um, cheese chips, uh, I'm trying to think. We do a lot of Stoka bars. If you haven't tried a Stoka bar, oh my God. They're like a nut butter bar with like a granola tinge to them. They also have Stoka cereal, which is like granola, straight up almonds, but it gives you that crunch or like a cereal if that's the thing you're looking for. Um, Yeah, we make a lot of croutons and stuff like that for the kids too for salads out of that zero carb bread. I try to adapt some of that to them and most of the time it's been really receptive. They love to have... We eat low carb meal, low to low to no carb meals, and the sense of fast carbs. We have a lot of slow carbs. So my kids love cauliflower and broccoli and zucchini. My daughter prefers zucchini noodles over the um, low carb ones from Great Low Carb Baking Company. But that's a really good company if you're looking for them. Um, so let me get into some of the stuff to my side because um, in 40 minutes I have to head off to work, and this video is a little longer than what I expected, but. I have clients coming on that I need to talk to as they're messaging me here, and I want to get through some of this stuff that I've pulled out from my cabinets to discuss. So let's head over to that. Okay, shaker bottle. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. This one was um, given to me at a food, a food friend. <laughs> Gosh, hello, Tuesday. 
was given to me at a health food store, um, and I have only used the ones that usually have the ball in it that mix it up. Those are my preferred go-to, but check this out. This shakes it up and actually mixes it really well. Now, I use this one a lot when I do detox water, and so I'll put my cucumber, my lemon, my mint, my water, and usually my little trick of the trade. No salt. It's a potassium supplement, and this has 640 milligrams when your body should have 37, uh, excuse me, 3,500 to 4,700 milligrams a day. So in a teaspoon, you get 640 milligrams of this, and I will add this to my water here and there because I am always running low on potassium. So instead of taking a pill, I'll do it in this form. And all that's in this is potassium chloride, potassium bitrate, um, adipic acid, silicone dioxide, which is just basically a um, preservative, mineral oil, and fumaric acid. Um, this is sodium free. It tastes just like salt, so if you do add salt to your water or anything, this is a cool way to go. Let's put some of this stuff down. Um, Flavor God again. Everybody keeps asking me because I use this one all the time. This is everything seasoning from them, but it's not everything seasoning like this one. This is from Trader Joe's and this is good with seeds and it's like putting everything bagel seasoning on things, which a lot of people will do with with um, celery, cream cheese in this or cucumbers, um, olive oil in this. I mean, there's many options to add your seeds and stuff. So good choice here. And I'm a huge garlic fan, so that's what that has. My computer's going off again. Um, I really like using this. This is a trilogy of flax, ugh, flax, chia, and hemp. Now these flax are not ground, so they're not great as great for absorption as the ground ones are. So I add those typically, but you gotta tweak it your own way. Trader Joe's has really good flavorings and seasonings. And so when I was doing my salad dressing, a lot of people were asking how they could tweak it up, how they could change it. Um, some people are into more of a thermogenic reaction. So I would tell them to do chili lime and add more cayenne because that'll burn it up and get your metabolism, metabolism going faster. Um, 21 Season Salute is just really awesome for salad dressings and stuff. It is onion spices, black pepper, celery, seed, cayenne pepper, parsley, basil, mar marjoram, bay leaf, oregano, thyme, savory, rosemary, cumin, mustard, coriander, um, garlic, carrot, orange peel, tomato granules, lemon juice powder, oil of lemon. So I mean really clean, lots of different things and it's just on the go simple, ch -ch -ch, done. I like mushrooms, a lot of people don't, but I do. And so this one's really awesome. Um, I like this one with a steak and I put this on my Trader Joe's cauliflower. Trader Joe's has the best hands down clean frozen cauliflower. People always say, I don't like the flavor of cauliflower. Well, I know. I went through that steam fresh bag and it was disgusting. It had no flavor and it had more processed ingredients. This Trader Joe's, I think it's Trader Giada's or something because they're trying to hit it in an Italian way, whatever. But um, theirs is very clean. It's just cauliflower and it's awesome. Like awesome. I don't know. But if you've ever been a person that likes pasta, butter, and cheese, that's the way to go. You heat it up for a couple minutes and it's amazing. Okay, so so many people messaged me when I did my dressing again. This is the black truffle oil from the San Francisco Salt Company. We use a ton of it. Like, I order this a couple times a year because we have this shaker next to my, and this was from the Truffle Hunter originally, but we've gone through this. I don't know. I've had this jar for years now, and this seems to be the replacement for regular salt in my house. Everyone seems to go for truffle now. And so I have the olive oils. I have truffle salt. I have a shaker. It's a problem. <laughs> a good problem, though. Uh, I'll talk about those. Okay. Clarified butter. This is amazing, amazing stuff. It's unsalted butter, and that's it. And it's boiled down and um, it has a higher smoke point. And if you're ever making something where you wanna drizzle this on instead of cook with it, it really infuses that butter flavor. Um, we use this a lot. It does have milk from cows, not treated with RBST. So it's actually a safer one. This one is from Trader Joe's. I wish, they, I, wish I got the bigger container, but um, I didn't when I was there. 
epic brand is pretty awesome this is beef tallow and it has a beef fat like a ribeye flavor to it so we add this all the time when we're cooking different things just to up the fats I don't eat this plain I mean it's just not a great flavor I don't know if you can see that like that you cook it and season with it and I prefer that but again that's me this is my favorite olive oil company and I have to make mention of them this is North Conway Olive Oil Company, and this is the basil one, but I have an entire spread of them, which I'll post on my Instagram. I literally have an entire setup, like a um, showcase of them in my kitchen, just because I use them so much. They are very flavorful, very clean. They have balsamics, and I like to mix them together when I'm cooking because it gives just a whole nother flavor. That being said, I'll use a base of a plain olive oil and add one of those olive oils into my dressing as I'm making them for the week and again whole nother level so if you ever get a chance to go to North Conway New Hampshire go past the outlet go up to the main store main store past the railroad and check that one out it's awesome um oh some people were asking me about chips these are quest chips protein chips and they are pretty awesome because they're low carb, 4G net carbs, and um, the high protein content, which is really great for people that are being fit focused. I'm not really big into chips. However, those make really great nachos if that's what you're going after and can give you that crunch. Um, my diet mostly contains very simple carbs, being the fact that I don't, uh, they're veggies. There's nothing really to hide about that. Uh, meats, cheeses, uh, I use those sparingly because they make me bloat and not feel so great. I try to stick with allulose, erythritol, or xylitol for any sweeteners or things I'm using. Truvia is a good one for me. Um, we don't bake a lot. If I'm having a sweet, it's usually like Keto Keto, which is something you can find on Etsy or she has her own website. I have had links on my own uh, Facebook as well as Instagram and I'm waiting for two, no, three, uh, jars to come in. I got the almond joy, not the almond joy cookie dough. I got the peanut butter chocolate chip cookie dough, and I got the mocha, which I have never had as the mocha. So I'm gonna try those in this round, and they're awesome. Um, I have eating evolved cups. That's one of my biggest chocolate sweets. Um, we have a full house stocked with things that aren't melted all. I mean, there's lots of options: Choc Zero, Lily's, Chocolate. Um, you just kind of have to dig, and yes, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but when you're eating cheap ingredients, that's what happens. Um, I know a lot of you guys don't have a big support system around. When you guys message me, you tell me how no one understands that you're eating keto, or they tell you it's dangerous, or they tell you, you need to eat more, you're starving yourself. I'm Tell them to just do free search, because you're really not. Fasting has been around for a long time, and especially... Um, Jewish religion is really big into it and they have some of the lowest cases of disease that being said you know it's not for everyone but if you can get yourself into a fast you'll just feel so much better it definitely does some mental clarity and um, helps your body another thing some people ask me about and have since I brought it in this is the zone all right so zone in is out of Seattle Washington and the zone CBD. If you're zoned in, this is a, the best one. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, if you're into CBD, that's the best one that's worked for me. I just got the rollerball and the pill supplements, but I've been using the tincture for, oh God, over a year now, I want to say. I'd have to ask the girl that, um, the girl that owns it actually showed it to me because we were having some issues. My husband's back was just awful. And I used it like an oil to rub on his back for a while. And then we started consuming it. And I mean, when you have a headache, I always put it on my temples if I have a headache. And it immediately takes it away. Like 10 minutes, you're done. Good to go. So I am a huge fan of the zone. Getting in the zone is the way to go. It's part of my supplements every morning and it makes my mental clarity feel better as well as my muscles not hurt as much. Literally, it is a miracle. You're sore, rub it in like a cream. You're got a headache, rub it in. You, you know, need to start your day out, get your dropper in, get that going. It literally almost like kickstarts your body. It's definitely a great medicine. Um, I know you guys have seen my supplements, so I won't go into those too much, but I am still on my same regimen. 
and I mostly take them for the mostly take them every day depending on if I'm fasting or not. Um, I've done a couple longer fasts. My longest fast was a 70, ugh, excuse me, seven day. Before that, I do typically do 72 hours. And when I did the seven day, I cut out all supplements but this guy. And I figured I needed something and it worked really well. I didn't do it for weight loss. That's not my way of going. I just wanted to see what the autophagy would be like and where my ketone levels would be, where I would be with digestion, where I would be, you know, coming back and the whole filter. And so it's more like a guinea pig thing for me. And that's kind of how science is in my world. I really enjoy learning and testing myself and seeing how far I can go. That being said, that famous phrase for me, um... I am very thankful for the life I live. My amazing man, like I, I glow talking about him, but, um, there is nothing like looking at someone and absolutely loving the shit out of them. <laughs> and I can honestly say it's the only time that I've ever met someone that makes me melt inside, but, and want to do good things and want to touch them and want to hug them and want to be the best me ever. It's so motivating when you have a group behind you that stands there and says, you know, I don't understand why you're doing this, but I support you. And it's always good to see my husband notice that my body's changing and I'm working out and things are growing and things are shrinking. And I think it's, it just tickles me to see him notice it. And I don't do this for anyone else. So that's another thing. People that have slid in my DMS and tried hitting on me and, um, saying things that they really shouldn't No. No, I'm, um, no, I think that's gross. I am very, very happy, very stable in my relationship. So if you try that shit, just know you'll be blocked as the other people have. I don't go for that. I think it's disrespectful, especially since you see my husband all over my page. I wouldn't do anything behind his back. And I think it's fucking gross that people think that's respectful to even talk to a woman that is very devoted to her husband in some of the ways that I've gotten messages. So there's your heads up. There's your warning. It's, that's gross. Don't do that to girls. Um, people put themselves out there and I'm not trying to be a sex symbol in any way. I'm not trying to pick up dates. I love the life I live. I love my household and I am not leaving it any time soon ever. Okay. Ever. I'm not looking to sleep in any other bed. That's gross. Um, ugh, sorry. I got a couple DMS the other day that I just blocked because I couldn't even address them. I'm like, no, no, no don't slide into some girl's DM with a boyfriend and try, or a husband or family and try to get attention or talk to her inappropriately because it just shows you're disrespectful and that you, if you would do that to someone, then you would do it behind someone's back. And that's gross. That's a gross character. I have a lot of respect for people who are who they are and stand up for what they believe in and are proud of the life they live. So that's how I live. And, um, I'm not changing. Um, that being said, thank you to my husband for everything he does. Thank you for the life you've afforded me by being you and pushing me to be the best me possible. Thank you for, you know, supporting me and always, you know, listening to me, even if you don't agree with me. Um, that means a lot. And I hope you guys all have the same thing because it makes you such a better woman. I feel truly happy in my skin and in love. I know it's crazy. I'm 35 and I've never, never met someone like him until he came into my world. It's crazy, right? But it just shows you more and more that life changes, things change and you can change. You can change your entire lifestyle. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take you three months to get everything into a routine where you're comfortable and you're thriving and this isn't torture. Do not build yourself up to have to succeed and build Rome in a day. It won't happen. You did not get this fat or this uncomfortable or this wrinkly or this size or, you know, these eating habits, whatever it is that your problems are, you didn't get there overnight. So don't expect to reverse it overnight. It takes months. And, you know, the three months that you give yourself of hard, hard, processed, you know, focused work, 
and I say processed, it's a, it's a process to go through and change everything over. And don't think you're going to have a keto kitchen in a freaking month. It costs a lot of money, number one, to change everything over. So slowly build things in and financially do what you can. Make exceptions for yourself. And, you know, you don't have to eat all organic. You don't have to eat all grass fed. You don't have to eat all farm. Whatever it is that works for you, you have to find that and stick to your guns. Don't let people talk you out of it. Get off your ass. Get into the gym. Go for a hike. Uh, don't let your discomfort hold you down. Because eventually, if you keep working out and f pushing yourself, you're going to be the most comfortable you've ever been and in a size smaller than you were before when you started. But you have to get there and you have to be willing to put in the work. And no one's going to put you down, especially in the gym. I learned that when I first got there. No one cares that you're bigger. They're going, yeah, she's giving it her all. She's going to try, you know? And so on my page and everything, I'm a support group for people. I'm not going to put you down. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to give you suggestions from where I see fit. And if you'd like it, you do. If you don't, you don't. But no judgments, no fingers pointed, no money needed. <laughs> Let's just all support each other and have a great week. It's Tuesday. I'm getting off of here. I got to go take care of the children that are starting to stir. Uh, get myself this hot mess shit going on for work. And, um... That's the end of that. I did my workout for an hour this morning, so I'll probably come back and do a little bit of a pump when I get back. I'm taking my kid fishing, so a little bit of outside extracurricular, and uh, that's my Tuesday. If you have any questions or whatnot, shoot me a DM that's nice and polite, and we'll go from there. Thanks, guys.